Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to part four of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way. We're getting into some valuable insights from this week's guests that you can definitely apply to your own journey. Please definitely stay tuned for advice and inspiration that can help us all. If you missed the first part of the week in part one, two, and three, definitely go back. The show notes should be filled with all the links, so go and click on them if you need to catch up. Also, definitely subscribe to the channel and all the other ones if you can. It's going to really help the show. But for now, enjoy the rest of the story. I wanted that father figure. Well, fucking oath, man. I, I, I'd, I'd love to have that relationship, but it's just... Just not that. Man, my, my, my dad's not that dude. Like, so, yeah. so I look elsewhere. The, the best... The 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 best thing that happened Sorry, I'm not frozen. The no. the best thing that happened out of that split up was my relationship with my brother. What happened with your brother? How did it how did that better how did that develop? Mate he's he's my best mate. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really good. So going from that annoying <laughs> brother to your best mate. Yeah. That's beautiful, man. And, and and are you are you is he close? Does he live close to to us? Yeah, he's um he's just in Torquay as well. So oh, nice. um yeah, he's got an awesome wife, he's got two kids, um like a niece, she's about to turn eighteen, and a nephew about to turn fourteen. Um, they're just they're good kids, like they're great kids, you know. Like, fuck, I'm I'm biased as shit. Like, of course, you're an asshole. Um, but you know that's like us being able to move down here and and be this close. Um, you know, like you don't understand it. You've got kids. Like your life changes. You know, you 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 pulled from pillar to post, and mm. um, you know, shit gets just work and kids and life and all that stuff gets busy. Um, you know, like everyone says it. You don't see as you don't see them as much as what y you probably want to. But I know they're only you know they're they're six minutes away. Like they're right yeah. there. Um, and you sort of go through stages like I probably hadn't seen my brother in five or six weeks. Um, and then I've seen him twice this week. Yeah. You know, like, and I'll see him on, on Saturday afternoon. and Like, so, you know, yeah, you don't see him for five weeks and then you see him three times in four days kind of thing. So and It's like nothing happened, nothing, no yeah. time was missed sort of thing, you know? Yeah. So. Um, That's true friendship or true family, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so you know, like, mate, we're like we're kind of thick as thieves now. Like, that's awesome. Um, and it was honestly, it was, yeah, I was growing, I was growing up, but it was, it was mum and dad splitting up that brought it. The to brother me. didn't handle it at all. Like, he left, he left home and didn't go back. Wow, so like, he stayed in the midst of it, I suppose. Yeah, I so he had a girlfriend um, who, who's now his wife. He just moved out. He just moved to her house and lived with her family. Like, he just never came back. Like, I literally packed up most of his bedroom when Dad sold the house. Yeah, well. <laughs> like, um, yeah, it was insane. He literally took what he could throw in his car and was gone. That, was that because of the stress of it, do you think? Yeah, he just... Um, he, I just, Couldn't he cope. didn't handle it. He just didn't handle it as, like, everyone handles it differently. For sure. Like, that was the way he handled it. Like, just move on, kind of, kind of thing. Something but, good came from it, though, right? And that's your relationship with him now, which is what you want, really, I suppose, isn't it? Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I, I, you know. Would you would you trade your father for your relationship with your father for relationship with your brother? Like, I don't know if you'd be able to make that decision, but I really didn't have the decision. But it's what I've ended up with, and mm -hmm. you know, would I change it? Probably not. No. Well, thanks for being vulnerable there. Um, and it, it, 
apart from your breakup from your parents going to back to the basketball journey that wasn't always smooth sailing was it before you went back before you left basketball essentially to build your business that wasn't quite smooth sailing was it either um talk about going into your professional career your seniors um and 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 the personal life mixed with that because that kind of interacts with each other doesn't it yeah it does and it it sort of um yeah, it's an it's an interesting crossover, but you know, I I, I now um, crazy. I wish I had found this twenty five years ago, but I'm now dealing with a sports psychologist with the Australian Deaf Team, mm-hmm. um, and it's a you know he talks about how you know how the things that can affect your performance, and you know it's not just are you fit and mm-hmm. do you know what you got to do. It's it's sleep, it's um, personal, uh, you know, personal, emotional, it's, fuck, it's, it's everything. Like, it's, it's crazy. So, um, yeah, I, I, I was a very naturally talented basketballer. Um, I, I had, you know, all the attributes. I'm six foot seven. I'm pretty lean. I was, I was athletic. Mm. I could run, jump. I could shoot, shoot the piss out of it. Um, like, all... All those things naturally quite gifted, but I was fucking lazy. Like I was, um, you know, I probably just, you know, I, I kind of skated by on natural ability. And it wasn't until I made it to seniors when you when you're starting to play against, um, you know, other guys that, you know, maybe, you know, what are we talking? We're talking a couple of percent. You know, yeah, my natural ability is a couple of percent better than theirs, but but they're actually now they're working on their game. Now they're now they're doing all this extra training, and um, you know they're they're understanding how to get fit, and they're all like all that side of things. And and I just um, I just really struggled with the motivation. Like, okay, I've got to go and get fit on my own. Mm. Um, I was great if there was a team training. I was there. I was there and I was doing it and I'd um, I'd trained to the best of my ability, all those things. Um, But, okay, Brent, you've got to go and get fit on your own for an off-season now. You're playing six months a year and then the other six months you've got to work out how to get fit yourself. Yeah, I I wasn't wasn't great at that. Yeah. Um, So I kind of watched people go past me. Um, Ultimately, uh, I, I ended up, probably missing out on a professional a real professional career um or even um you know just making it to where i probably hoped i'd end up um where 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 was that hope well it it varied a bit like and i don't know if i've ever worked this out because i had i'm quite creative um i had the opportunity to go to the US and go to high school for a year and potentially look at college scholarships. Um, and being locked into you're going to be a basketballer 24 hours, you know, like what would it be, 16 hours a day, seven days a week, yeah. kind of actually scared the shit out of me. Um, yeah. I've always needed those creative outlets for drawing painting, just fucking around, thinking, creativity, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So it did scare the shit out of me a little bit, but um, I also love the game. Like, you know, you, there's that, there's that what's on the other side of that. Like if I go down that path, what's, what's on it? Um, being as immature as I was as a kid probably hurt. I, I wasn't ready, you know, at year 12, I probably wasn't ready to pack up, leave home and, um, leave home and go to the other side of the world to uh, to chase this basketball career. So there's there's a, a few layers to it, mm. um, but yeah, I, I did watch a lot of those guys that were individually motivated, um, kind of go past me, um, and, and you know just get more minutes, have more, you know, getting regular games, um, playing more minutes, doing all those things. So. Um, I mean, I still still played back then. It was ABA or CBA, then Siebel, 
um, Southeast Australian Basketball League, and and now it's NBL One. So it was it was a really good level. Um, it just probably probably didn't quite hit the mark of where I really wanted to be. Yeah. Um, during that time, obviously, you know, young adult met um, met met a girl, fell in love, um, got serious. Um, got engaged. How old were you at that point? Uh, when I met her, I was um, 20. I just turned 20. Um, and we got engaged. Uh, I got married um, Married at 25. Yeah. Um, separated two years, one month, and three days later. So I didn't. Why is that embedded in your head so clearly? Because uh, I've won a lot of bets on that. Oh, yeah, won a lot. Won a lot. In, in what sense? Well, other mates' marriages have not lasted as long as oh. my first one. I see what so. you mean. <laughs> okay, as long as you make your money off it. <laughs> not really money, more like beers. But okay. um, well, that's all right. Yeah. Too. Anyway. Um, so why yeah, did that so- end on that particular day then? Uh, you know why it ended? Um, for a long time, she told me, if you ever shave your head, get a motorbike or get tattoos, we're done. Oh. Um, so I'll just, uh, <laughs> Brent's currently showing his arm for those who are not watching, uh, full of tattoos. Well, well, I mean, why did that bother her so much? Or why did then you react to that though? Um, so, uh, on, my 28th birthday was coming up. We we were in a bad place as as a couple. Um, like it was, I would class it as a pretty toxic relationship. And, um, you know, like a relationship's a two-way street. Yeah. Like, we're just like, looking at your perspective here, remember, yeah, yeah. everybody. So re- relationship's a two-way street. So yeah. there was stuff being done on both sides of the re- relationship that were not helping the relationship. So... Like, I am not in any way going to just say, oh, it was her, it was her, it was bad. Okay. So, um, mate, so she was very jealous, very jealous and very possessive. And because of, not because of that, I, I, I became a compulsive liar. All right. So things like my friends would ring me up and say, do you want to, we're going out Saturday night. Are you coming? I would lie to my friends and, oh, we've got a family do. Sorry, I can't make it. All right. Now, I'd do that because it was easier to not go out with my mates than go out with my mates and then deal with the jealousy and the accusations that came mm-hmm. along with a night out with my mates. So, but then I was lying to her. I was lying to my family. I was lying to my. I was fucking lying to everyone, mate. How did you lie to her? I would still go out and see friends and tell her I was doing other stuff, like like catch twenty two, aren't you? Yeah, with yourself. Then I'd I'd get caught out. Mm. Okay, so I wasn't. (laughs) I wasn't a very fucking good liar. Then I'd get caught out, and then it would fuel that jealousy fire. Yeah. So you know what I mean? Like it was just, I, I say it was a toxic relationship because my worst traits were fueling her worst traits. Mm. And then her worst traits, were, it was just a fucking cycle. It was a really, really, really bad cycle. Um, the fight were, and the arguments would last for weeks the depression that kicked in from me because of feeling like you're constantly walking on eggshells, you're constantly fighting, you're arguing about the same fucking things over and over and over again. I'm now someone that I don't like. I don't I don't trust myself. I don't like myself. I don't like the person I've become. How now did your depression I'm, look like? What did your depression um, look like? Sorry, it got it got bad. It got really bad. It it actually got to a point where 
I was like trying to work out how to how to end it. So end your end your life. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, how did it? How how close did it get to that? I mean, that's well, a dark I, space to be in, isn't it? I never made an attempt, mm-hmm. but there was thoughts, thoughts, and 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 planning, and like how to go that. And I, I had a conversation. I've had this conversation with my mother once, mm. and I when I got to the towards the end of the relationship, I remember you got to remember mum and I are real close. Like she was, she's always been one of my best friends and like she's apart from my wife, she's my biggest ally. Like, um, and I remember going to my mum's house and I sat at her kitchen bench and we had a cup of tea and she was in the kitchen and we were talking and I, I, I don't think I to- – I'm pretty sure I didn't tell her exactly where my head was at, but I did tell her that I had, like, some big decisions that I had to make about where my life was headed and, and you know, like, am I going to have the balls yeah. to leave my, my wife at the time? And um, that was that that was the thing. Like, I, you know, I was in that darker place. They're just making simple decisions. Like, I think this is something that a lot of people don't understand about depression and and ultimately suicide. Is you know, people think, oh, just go and get some help. Like, mate, I couldn't decide if I wanted peanut butter or Vegemite on my toast, and it would fucking I, that would make me depressed because I couldn't even make that decision. Like, yeah. like just making the most simple decisions, or or not being able to think clearly about those simple decisions, yeah. like can fuel depression. Like it's it's a really when you're at the bottom of the barrel, just am I going to put blue pants on or black pants on? Is is a fucking tough a tough road to hope. Yeah, right. I've never looked at it like that before, but you're right. So, you know, it's I'm sitting there saying I'm sitting there having this conversation in my mu- with my mum, and in my head, all I'm thinking is I either have to leave her or kill myself. They were the two, the only two options on the table that I could come up with. Like they were uh, as ridiculous like you know i'm sh- some people some people as i'm saying this will be going oh if i can get it and others will be going mate this guy's fucking crazy just do like, it yeah i know i get it yeah, I've, I've had the same yeah, thing yeah they were the like you've got two options on the table and that's it leave her the fucking tough road mm. and deal with all that and it's going to take a year two years fucking who knows how long it's going to take to to sort through that emotional mess, or you can end it in seconds. Okay, so like the car coming out of the meeting regarding your your career and uh, and getting the school over to to Australia. What was that car moment of that decision making? I, I know it's not necessarily the car, but, but what was that decision? That point of decision making which determined the path that you chose to? Because obviously you're here. What was that moment? So sitting at my mum's kitchen, like um, breakfast counter, mm-hmm. um, kitchen bench there, we had this conversation. Like I said, we've had it once and we've never spoken about it again. Mm-hmm. She let me walk out her front door and she had no idea if she'd ever see me again. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a fucking brave lady. And she knew that. Yeah. And I think 
somewhere along the line, her letting me go. Like, made me realise that there was only one option. And it was going to be a fucking hard one. Hmm. But it, it, it came with some really shit conversations. Mm-hmm. And it was, you're a fucking grown up, mate. You, you're grown up enough to do things like get married. You're grown up enough to, you know, have a house and a mortgage and all those things. And it's. You're grown enough to do that. You, yeah. you, you got to be grown up enough to have grown up conversations with people. Did and you... and it, it was a hard thing because I, I was always, I, I was always someone that kind of tried to avoid confrontation, except with my brother. <laughs> did, um, so, yeah. So you walking down the path of leaving your mum's door, did that cross your mind or did you think about that thought process you just mentioned earlier later on in life? Or did you actually think it, of it there and then in the moment? No, I had not I had no idea. I was just walking out the door. But yeah. but you think about that now and that obviously kills you. I think you. about it. I think about it now and I've thought about it a lot over the years like it was. That was... That was the point, but yeah, and that must like have been said, painful for her. Yeah, yeah, she um, obviously like I, I'd I'd talk about it with her, but she's not. She no, no chance she could have that conversation a second time with me. Hmm. So it was a, it was a it was a pretty tough conversation the first so, time we had it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so that that's affected your personal life. Did it? Did this relationship affect your basketball life? Yeah. So at the time, so probably a few years earlier, um, I actually retired. Like I, I, I say retired. I actually stopped playing basketball. Like I was, I was playing at a high level. Like I said, and I decided that you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to play next year. Um, you know, there's. There's always been a lot of females, a lot of friends. You know, every every club I've played at has had a a women's team, a men's team, women's team. And I thought, you know what, I'll just remove myself from basketball, um, and maybe, and we got engaged. So I thought, if I'm if I'm showing, you know, this my girlfriend, fiance, if I'm showing her that I'm committed to her and, you know, I'm I'm engaged to her and I'm not going to play basketball and I'm going to remove myself from a lot of that a lot of that situation, um, you know, is that enough to, you know, just just tone down the, the jealousy and all those things? And um sad, sadly it didn't. It didn't go that way. Um and I I took a couple of years off and it didn't get any better. So I'm like, well, fuck it. I'm not doing something that I love. Mm. And I think that actually, I, I actually think that had a big impact on my spiral downhill and depression because I wasn't playing basketball and I wasn't doing something mm. that I absolutely adore and love and passionate about and all those things. Yeah, um, yeah there's layers but, to the depression, isn't there? Not just the relationship, but the fact that you've removed yourself. The root, another part of the root cause is is taking something away that you love and admire that you have done since you were five. You're taking yeah. your soul out of yourself, essentially. Yeah. So it was, um, you know, like that was, it was, it was, was it naive? I don't know. I was just, I was, I was trying, man. Like I, mm. I was. On one hand, I was trying, and then on the other hand, I was like not helping the situation at all. You know what I mean? Like it mm. was just um, you're trying to, though, right? It trying, but yeah, like you know, one hand's creating more tension, and the other hand's trying to do everything you can to 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 um, build a solid relationship you know like but so that comes yeah. with the territory of growing up and maturity and brain development and, and and life experiences and and scenario experiences whether it's that some form of trauma or whether it's some form of adversity i mean you wouldn't do that now you'd have a different approach right and you yeah you think about that now based on the things you've been through and and 
and it's probably led to why you've been so successful as a, a businessman, a, um, a partner, a husband, a head coach for an Australian team, owning your own business and bringing a school from a, another country to this country. I mean, that is phenomenal. Yeah, mate, it is. It feels pretty good when you say all that stuff. It does. And you need to hear, well, you do need to hear it from somebody else. And that's, you might think it, but it's important that other people say it because people, you need to, you need to reflect on that. And that's made it who you are today. I mean, it's probably a better ending, better way to end the episode saying what I've just said. So I've kind of yeah. ruined the ending, but <laughs> so it doesn't matter. I'll get it in there now. Yeah. Yeah. I won't repeat it later, but I've said my piece. I yeah. feel like this, you know, this is what's contributed to you leading your own way now. I know I just cut you off. So yeah. I have got no, something to I, say, but I, go on. I 100% agree with what you're saying. Like mm. everything, as much as there's stuff that, you know, clearly still upsets me, like some of these things, That's you okay. know, obviously got a bit emotional at a couple of times here. Yeah. Um, you know, there are things that that upset me, but it is my story, man. Yeah. Like, and and I, I said earlier, you like, I, I have to learn. Uh, like I'm not a book-learned person on – I learn by doing kind of situation and, and yeah, this has all made me who I am. And, um, I wasn't a great husband to my first wife. I'm a much better husband to Kim now, but still, but I, can still I can still be better and I'm still yeah. learning and, and we're still evolving, but there's stuff that, she body had to deal with early on mm. that that I just thought happened in every relationship and every time she'd ask me something like, Oh, where are you off to? And I'd be like, mm, fucking what's you know, like yeah. get all defensive, like mm. Yeah. Just asking you a question, like, where are you going? Yeah. Like that's so and, you brought and, traits with you from your past and the, yeah, the but, few, you know, to the present moment. A hundred percent. hundred percent. And it and it made for like I nearly lost Kim because I was still carrying fucking baggage from the past. Like yeah. um but anyway to get to get back to basketball. So I was actually playing um Siebel NBL one which is um, for those outside of Australia is the division below the NBL which is the pro league um yeah. here in Australia. Um yeah so carry on so I was I was playing in that level while I was literally going through this marriage breakup. So I I I did. I, I walked out of my mum's house where I was sitting at the kitchen bench. She doesn't know if she's ever going to see me again or not. Um and um the next day I drove round to my my wife had gone to her mother's house and I drove around to her mother's house um and and I told her that I was I was leaving and I wanted a separation. Um and it's by far the hardest conversation I've ever had in my life. Um I bet you got and- a lot from it too. Yeah, I, mate, I don't ever want to have to have a conversation. The only other conversation that I've had, and it doesn't comparison, but it's a similar sort of feeling, is a conversation where I've had to fire an employee. Mm. And it, it 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 just makes you, like, the, the you know, leaving the with that. Is, is much, much harder. But um, they both those conversations kind of make you feel pretty, yeah. pretty sick. But um, yeah, I, I I did it. I did it at a mum's house because I knew her mum was there, and you know she wasn't essentially alone. Yeah, um, that's nice. I don't know if there's a good place to have that conversation, but I sort of felt like at least you know mum and sister were at least there to look after her. Mm. Um. Yeah. So, and, oh God, no, go and, and and I was still, you know, I was still trying to play basketball, and mm. I I vividly remember turning up to 
a training session and sitting in the car park and, and I text my coach saying, hey, I'm, I'm running late. And when I got to training, I, I parked my car and just burst into tears. And I, I cry. I, I don't know when this is in the time frame, but it was during the basketball season. And I cried and I cried and I, I cried. I couldn't get out of the car. I was kind of paralyzed in the car. And I realized I'd been there for quite a while. And then I started to freak out about, oh, my God, my teammates are going to finish training soon and they're going to come out and see my car parked in the car park and I haven't been at training. Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.